So Lance Briggs, seven Pro Bowls, 12 years, second leading tackler, an all-time NFL great, 100-plus tackles in eight of 12 years. That is a lot of collisions, my friend. That is a lot. It's a lot. It's a lot. So let's start with this. Um, I, I have been supportive of Matt Nagy. Lance, I don't love him saying, hey, Matt, uh, you know, Andy Dalton's a starter. Well, 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 you've already lost the city. If Justin Fields is good and you start, you know, Andy Dalton, now you've lost the locker room and you can't fool players. I think you have to watch this game and then make a decision Tuesday morning. Your takeaway on this, Andy Dalton starting no matter what thing. Well, if, if, you, if, you, if you've watched these, these games, uh, Andy Dalton hasn't played bad. Um, let's let, let's start that. Let's start right there. Now, listen. I'm a I'm a fan. If 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 Justin Fields starts, you know, the rest of the season, I'm a fan of it. If Andy Dalton comes in and Andy Dalton starts and Justin Fields comes in later, I'm a fan of that as well. I think the biggest the the, the biggest factor here is the play of the defense. If the defense plays the way that they played uh, last week against Cincinnati. Um, it, it, it really is not going to matter too much about who's going to play quarterback because when you're getting six sacks, especially going into Cleveland, you're getting six sacks. Defensively, you're going to be dominant, and you're going to put every any quarterback on the other side in a position to win. If, they, if the defense plays the way they played week one, then we're going to be in trouble, you know, and, and that's going to cause, in, in my opinion, for, for Justin Fields to probably have to, to come in a little earlier. So let, let's talk. Bears do get a couple of people back defensively, so I do think it's a very close game. What would Justin Fields have to do? Lance, you you faced these young quarterbacks for years. Uh, yeah. would it, would 21 of 30, a pick, a touchdown, but, but felt like under control, didn't have nervous feet, kind of felt like he controlled the game. What would you have to see that you'd be like, all right, kids ready to go? Well, the things that you already see from him, he's he's confident in the pocket and, you know, the the walking up to the line, helping with protection, pointing out, you know, the threats uh, to the pass rush, uh, to the protection, uh, um, moving his feet, coming around, you know, having more having more positive plays than than negative plays. He's, he's still a young guy. He's still a young kid. He's still a rookie and, and mistakes are going to happen. But uh, do the things that 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 you do extremely well. And show that and be, be productive that way. Be consistent that way. You know, it, it is interesting because Andy Dalton doesn't have a lot of loyalty in the Bears locker room because he hasn't been there for years. Like, I get Garoppolo in San Francisco, Lance. I mean, mm-hmm. I, I get guys. They, they've caught a lot of passes. He's their guy. They've gone out drinking with him. They've hung out with him. I get mm-hmm. it. Andy doesn't have that, you know, that reservoir of support. If, if Do you think this could divide the locker room if Justin Fields isn't great but he's good. They lose close, and half the locker room wants Justin, half wants Andy. I don't think so. No, you, you, I don't think that's the way the locker room would work. I don't, you know, it, you, you, you can't be that fickle in the locker room. You, you, you know, you, you have to go with who, who, whoever that choice is. I've been on teams where uh, uh, Kyle Orton, you know, he he had led us to you know seven seven games in a row, seven wins in a row, and and Rex Grossman comes back from health and. And Lovey Smith says Rex Grossman's our guy. You know, it didn't it didn't divide our our team. It was okay. That's our quarterback. That's who we we're, we're going to get behind. So, I, and, and I'm assuming, and I'm not in that locker room, but I'm assuming that's the 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 same way that that the locker room is with the Bears now. Whoever the whoever's getting the call, that's who we're going to be behind. That's the guy that's going to lead us out. So we've been saying this is that during the off season, Aaron Rodgers, and as a Bear, you know all about the Packers and Aaron. Uh, uh, Aaron said during the off season, silence is wisdom. Sometimes, yet Aaron won't stop talking. He has a grievance session every week. And I, how does it, <laughs> how does it land for you? He, I mean, it's it's he's been combative. Uh, he's argumentative. This yesterday, he said, uh, "You know, maybe I was too harsh. I, you have a right to your opinion." I've just never seen a quarterback this verbal, <laughs> this talkative, going at people. Does, does it matter to teammates? Or I mean, what do you make of it? Aaron Rodgers is in a different category, and um, whatever Aaron Rodgers uh, uh, does, whether it be in front of the media, in front of his team, or whatever it is, he's earned that right. Um, you know, he's one of the most talented quarterbacks to ever play this game. Um, and, and certainly that I've ever played against. So, you know, when, when he walks into the room, you know, he, he, he not only demands respect, but, uh, he's going to be heard with whatever is going on on his mind. 
You know, as, as a rookie, you come in, nobody wants to hear what you have to say. But on the, uh, the opposite end of that spectrum is an Aaron Rodgers. And what he says matters. Yeah. So, uh, you know, Brady this week has to face the Rams in Los Angeles. That's a tall order. Then he goes and faces mm-hmm. New England. And that's a very good defense who can unravel quarterbacks, even Tom, if he's not on his game. And mm-hmm. uh, his trainer went out and took a shot at Belichick today. And I probably wouldn't have loved that. But, you know, it is what it is. It's out there. Tom's a star. Belichick's got a legacy, a legacy to protect. It, yep. is, it is interesting, though. When Are you surprised at all that the divorce is now so one-sided? Because we went back and forth for years. Is it Belichick? <laughs> is it Brady? And you wake up this morning and you're like, man. That's a slam. That's Dr. J slam dunking on an inferior defender. Are you surprised by the uh, post-divorce result so far? Well, you know, most 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 quarterbacks that that leave don't find the kind of success that that Tom Brady has. You know, he he, he left and went and won a Super Bowl the year after. You know, it, it reminds me of uh, of Joe Montana leaving the Niners and going to Kansas City and and going up to the the AFC Championship and losing the AFC Championship you know, getting hurt and losing the AFC championship. Um, so, so most times when, when these players leave after a glorious career, it's like I leave and then you just, it's like you're collecting a paycheck, right. you know, most quarters are collecting a paycheck and, and that's not the case here. You, you, you're, you're getting even better than, than you were the years previous. So it's uh it's, it's a great storyline for Tom. It's a great storyline altogether, but, uh, but kudos to Tom for uh, continuing to play well. All right, let's circle back. Uh, The Chicago Bears go on the road to Cleveland. Now, Cleveland's got seven new defensive starters. They're not synced up yet. You can tell in the passing game. There's there's chunk yardage available. Kind of tell me what kind of game you expect to see the Bears and the Browns this weekend in Ohio. You have to play to Justin Fields' strengths. His strengths are, you know, he's he can move in the pocket. He's got good feet. He can he can elude uh, defenders. Uh, uh, get him outside. You know, let, let allow that move that pocket. You know, don't don't let him just sit in there and let Miles uh, Miles Garrett and and Jadavion Clowney close in on him. Uh, let him move his feet. You know, run the ball uh, and keep them off their toes. And on on the opposite side, keep that offense off the field. You know, uh, um, be as dominant defensively as you were last week. That's where most of the money is for the Bears, and that's where they have to show up. That will help Justin Fields uh, come Sunday. What'd you make of Sam Darnold? He was pretty lousy his first few years. What do you make of that team and Darnold? Were you, were you a fan? What do you make? He can be a little bit reckless, but boy, it's nice to play with a running game and a lead. What'd you make of him last night? Uh, I, you know, uh, if if you're able to make it into the NFL, you know, I don't I don't typically see you as a bad player. You know, and maybe you're in a bad situation. So uh, for for Sam, he's he's uh, these uh, over these first two games, he's proven that he was just in a bad situation and. And hopefully this this trend continues for him and he has to do it. But it has to be consistent. You got to do this for for 17 games and into the playoffs and do it again next year to prove everybody that you're the real deal. Yeah. Lance, great seeing you. Great career. We'll talk soon. Thank you so much. You got it, Kyle. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from The Herd or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.